everyone and welcome back to another Victober video and I today wanted to talk about Victorian children's literature. Over time I have found a fair number of favorites that I just think are delightful children's fiction. I will say that as far as Victorian literature goes, the children's literature I am a bit pickier about um, because the kind of depths of characterization aren't always going to be as strong in children's literature and it just feels a bit kind of sugary sweet or just odd and unusual. Um, and I am looking forward to telling you about the ones that I love and then a couple that I haven't gotten to, but I want to get to very shortly. So the first is one that has been put into a beautiful picture book and that is The Reluctant Dragon by Kenneth Graham. And it's such a charming story all about a dragon who just wants to live a peaceful life. But because of the stereotypes that are out there about dragons, everyone that he interacts with, all of the people think that he has come to eat them up and try to destroy their village. Uh, but he makes a boy, uh, he makes friends with a boy, and uh, over time they're able to figure out how to communicate to everyone. Really, he just wants to live peacefully. Um, and it's told in such a delightful manner. Um, so yeah, I think it's a really lovely picture book. It is a lengthier picture book, uh, but I, I don't think I would call it a chapter book ever. Uh, so it's a really lovely story and one that I read aloud to my boys and they both thoroughly enjoyed it. The next one on the list is A Child's Garden of Verses. This is by Robert Louis Stevenson. I have read this one multiple times now. I've read it aloud a couple times. I've read it on my own. And it was one of those books that very much captivated me as a child. And then as an adult, it has stayed with me. Just how in awe I am of the beauty of the verses and the imagery that it conjures up in the reader's mind. And I know that it just speaks to the kind of universal experience of being a child and using your imagination and what a wonderful escape books can be and being fascinated by things like swinging up high and looking at the beautiful moon and how um, beauty and nature can be an endless source of fascination and imagination. And it's just very much captures what it is like to be a child filled with wonder. And um, yeah, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful and accessible poetry collection. Then the next one is The Jungle Book. Hi everyone, Editing Kate here. And I just wanted to hop on because the timing of me editing this video lined up perfectly with going to a library book sale today and finding this beautiful two volume set of The Jungle Books. Uh, so I was delighted. As soon as I was talking about Jungle Books in this video, that you're watching, I thought, where is my copy? I don't know where it is. And I have a Barnes & Noble paperback, which is nice. But when I saw these, I thought these would be so nice to read aloud to the boys from. And uh, this is Doubleday Press and the illustrations are by Aldrin Watson. I don't recognize that name. I don't know if I've read anything else um, that is illustrated by him. It looks like this came out 1948. Uh, so, let me find a good illustration for you. Just pen and ink. There we go. I think that's Sher Khan there. And oh, here's Ka. Or the chapter is called Ka's Hunting, but here's Ka. There we go. Very excited to find these and just wanted to share that with you. Uh, so, or the next ones are The Jungle Books uh, by Rudyard Kipling. And these are, uh, you know, there's two in the collection. And um, I mean, the Disney cartoon, it takes loosely from it. It takes kind of the characters and plops them in a Disney cartoon. And I really enjoy this. It's been about 10 years since I read it, but I did really enjoy it when I read it. And it's one that I think I would like to read aloud to my boys unless... The language is kind of, I don't know now, you know, reading it to a child, would it be kind of out of their depth or, or not? I'm not sure. So I'll have to pick it up and kind of look at it again and see what I think. But I remember just being really enchanted by it, um, how the animals are sentient beings in this. And um, the character of Mowgli and Baloo and Bagheera, just I found myself really drawn to the story. And it's one that I would like to return, uh, return to again. And it's the Kipling that I have enjoyed the most. 
And then the next one, and a this was new to me this year, and that is a Moon Fleet. And this um, is just a really solid adventure story. And I think it, you know, Treasure Island uh, ranks slightly above it, but only slightly. I really enjoy this tale. It feels maybe a bit more heartfelt and sentimental than Treasure Island, I would say. Uh, but there are some really heartbreaking things that happen in it. It all has to do with smuggling. So those of you kind of Daphne du Maurier fans, this might be worth checking out. And I had no idea how it was going to end, what was going to happen. It starts out with some amazing atmosphere. I think that the characters aren't quite as complex as they are in Treasure Island, and that's why it didn't end up outranking Treasure Island. And then, speaking of, and I want to show you my awesome copy, Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. So this is illustrated by Robert Ingpen, and he has done a number of children's classics. And the other one that I really have my eye on is his copy of The Wind in the Willows. Um, and this is just... I love how this story kicks off with mysterious characters and the Benbow Inn, and it's got this very cozy, safe kind of, um, uh, what do I want to say, uh, very homey uh, feel to it, where everyone knows everyone in the small community and you all look out for each other. And so then some outsiders come in and wow, it just changes everything. And Jim Hawkins, I find so fascinating as a character, but even more fascinating to me is Long John Silver. Um, he's such a complex villain, and I find him endlessly fascinating. So to me, he is one of the most amazing character creations in all of Victorian literature. Um, and I just love what a darn good adventure story this is. So if you want something that's just like classic, what is going to happen next? Um following your characters through their fates with some mortal peril, a little touch of mortal peril in there. Treasure Island is a great, great book to try. And then the next one is The Book of Dragons by E. Nesbitt. So this is a short story collection and each story features a dragon in it and something different happens with a dragon. The dragons range in the kind of the amount of friendly that they are, uh, but it is just really captivating and whimsical. And that was the first book by E. Nesbitt that I ever read. And I did it as a read aloud. I do know that um, I have heard from people who kind of read it on their own. It's maybe not the most intriguing, but as a read aloud, I had it recommended from a friend who read it aloud. And then I did it as a read aloud. The language is just absolutely beautiful, but also it could be that I really love fairy tales and folk tales. And so I think if you are in that camp of enjoying fairy tales and folk tales and kind of the amount of characterization that you will get in those stories, then you could really enjoy the Book of Dragons. And especially if you find an illustrated edition, there are some really lovely illustrations in there. And I will never forget, there's one story where a dragon eats an entire town. Um, so the illustration was very memorable for that. Uh, the next one that I found out from, uh, I found out about from Katie at Books and Things is The Young Pretenders by Edith Henrietta Fowler. Now the image for the Persephone edition is not going to be that interesting. So I just will show you the end papers for it. And it is this little, I'm pretty sure it's a wallpaper print. Um, let's see if I can find that out uh, pretty easily for you. The end paper is taken from Apple, designed by Lindsay P. Butterfield for um, GP and J. Baker in 1895. So this is a story with very endearing children in it. And uh, Babs is the main character and then her brother, whose name escapes me, but their parents are off in India. And so they are taken under the guardianship of some family and all of the scrapes that they get into and um, the misinterpretations uh, that they have of certain words that they hear. And it's just Babs is an incredibly endearing character. They, uh, it's just one of those more understated books that as I was reading, I thought, this is fine. You know, I'm enjoying it well enough. And then the longer I've gotten out of it, I thought, you know what, that really did win me over. Um, so it's one that as I look back, I look back on very fondly. And I do love also that there are illustrations included. It's always a bonus to me. Um, I wish illustrations were in adult literature, uh, but even more so, I think it's wonderful when illustrations are in children's literature. And then the next one that I want to talk about, and I have to show my edition of this one too, and that is Countess Kate 
by Charlotte Mary Young. I fell completely head over heels for this book this year. I read it earlier with uh, the lovely Stephanie at Miss Richards Reads, and we both were completely and utterly charmed by it. And I think that um, books that have uh, children that I, I, I'm going to be sold if the children are not sugary sweet um, and they do get into mistakes, but they always mean well, they have the best of intentions. That to me, that clinches it kind of the Henry Huggins of the Victorian era. Um, and uh, Kate, just I, I have said before that this book to me seems like if Joe March slash Anne Shirley all of a sudden became a countess, how it would go. And I find her to be such a magnetic character to watch kind of her life completely turn over. She has to go live with relatives she doesn't know at all, and they're very buttoned up, and her life is completely turned upside down, and how she deals with this. And then I love this story. I think it's the Crystal Palace that they're in, um, and she has fallen in the fountain. Uh, so I now own three Victorian children's classics illustrated by Gwen Ravarat. So this is one. Um, and then I showed you earlier the one illustration from The Young Pretenders. Uh, and then I'll show you the third one in a moment. Uh, so the next book that I want to talk about is another Charlotte Mary Young, and that is The Little Duke. So this is all about Richard of Normandy. It's historical fiction. And so I have a very kind of specific type of historical fiction that I will love, and it's either historical romance or historical mystery. And this is kind of just pure, plain and simple historical fiction. And so I loved it as much as I could. Um, Charlotte Mary Young, she could make me enjoy kind of just plain historical fiction. So I think those that really enjoy historical fiction could enjoy this even more than I do. And I will note that I listened to the audiobook of this with my boys last Victober. I think it was Victober a year ago. And my older son, Peter, particularly enjoyed it. So I think it's definitely worth checking out if you think you would be mildly interested. And I think I was also a bit out of my depth with the time period. I should have done my homework before going into it. Uh, then one that was unfortunately a miss for me is Black Beauty. So I tried reading that this last October and I gave up. I only had, I think, about two hours of audio left. And I it just was incredibly cyclical. You know, hear something bad that happens to... Black Beauty and hear something nice that happens and oh then something bad happens again and something nice and I wasn't drawn to any of the human characters it just it felt very kind of um cut and paste like here's the elements to the story so it did not draw me in um but it is a very iconic um classic I think maybe if I had read this as a child I could have grown up loving it but it's just too late for me um, to fall in love with Black Beauty. Peter, however, absolutely loved it. So I'm really glad that he enjoyed it um, out of the two of us. Uh, then two books that I have fallen completely in love with, and that is The Story of the Treasure Seekers and The Would-Be Goods, which is its sequel. Then there is a, it's a trilogy. So the third one is called The New Treasure Seekers, and that is published after the Victorian era. So I haven't had as much wind in my sails to get to it yet. I just keep prioritizing Victorian literature. Um, and it is such a delightful story. You know how I mentioned earlier, kind of uh, well-intentioned children who constantly get into scrapes, and that is this in spades. I also read The, the Railway Children by E. Nesbitt, and the children were just too well-behaved. Um, it was a little dull to me which it definitely had some winning elements, but just out of the two, I fell completely in love with the story of the treasure seekers and the would-be goods. And what I really appreciated is that um, the story of the treasure seekers is very much city life and um, just some really funny adventures that happen to them there. And then the would-be goods, they have moved to the countryside because of family circumstances. And there are some delightful kind of countryside adventures that happen there. So a lovely variety between the two of them. And I own a physical copy of The Would-Be Goods, and I don't know where it is right now. Um, but I don't, I want to get a matching copy of The Treasure Seekers. So hopefully at some point I will. Uh, and they're brimming, the edition I have, the Puffin edition, is brimming over with illustrations. So a really delightful couple of children's books. Um, and I will say, since it is Victorian, you're definitely going to notice some themes of colonialism that are in there. It comes across very strongly. Uh, so it can lead to interesting discussions. And I think, you know, just read books in context. Don't be so affronted, you know, if it's 
wow, this is a Victorian book with Victorian values. But I do feel like just if if you wanted a heads up, you know, but if that's not at all me saying because it has Victorian values, don't read it. Obviously, I'm one of the hosts of Victober. So I love Victorian literature um, in all of its Victorianness. Okay, then the next one is The Runaway. This is by Elizabeth Anna Hart, another three, uh, three name author. Um, and this is the third one that I have illustrated uh, by Gwen Ravera. So first I will show you these end papers, which might be my most favorite end papers of all. Um, and they were designed and hand printed on linen by Margaret Calkin James for a school schoolroom at Hornbeams, which I assume is an estate. So here are the end papers in all their glory. I think they're so beautiful. And then what I love is there is a chart of characters at the beginning. And then some lovely, lovely pictures. I'll show you one more picture. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh my goodness. So this one I have not read yet. And then I'll just show you. It has a similar chart, but some different notes about different characters at the end. How endearing is that? Um, I know that it's about um, a neighbor girl who I think they they she runs away. And so this family takes her in or maybe the daughter takes her in secret, secretly. I'm going in a bit blind. Um, I know that Simon from Tea or Books, the podcast, really enjoyed this. And so I went ahead and ordered a used copy of it. I'm very excited to try it uh, just to find more uh, kind of under, uh, what do I want to say? Under the radar, Victorian children's literature would be a really nice thing. Uh, then the next one that I want to talk about is The Little Lame Prince. And this is one of my favorites. I fell completely in love with it last year. Again, the theme of fairy tale. And it's told in such a heartfelt way. And I love um, the whimsical nature of it and how you see uh, the little lame prince, you see him, um, you see the way he sees the world and the ways that he feels limited and the ways that he lacks accessibility to things because he is lame. Um, and it's just, uh, the, there's a fairy godmother character. And so here's a character that you have compassion for, but you don't pity in the little lame prince. It's told in such a, an even keeled um, way. And I think it's so um, underrated. Now, what's interesting is si since reading The Little Lame Prince, I happen upon references to this story everywhere, including in the Betsy Tacey books. Um, and I never noticed them before. So it's really fun in older popular culture to come across Victorian titles that are not quite in vogue anymore. And it's just really nice to feel, know these references and to recommend, uh, to, to recognize them when you happen upon them. Um, then Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. Now, I might get myself canceled. I do not enjoy these books, not even a smidgen. Um, they are in the weird for the sake of being weird category to me. I need to feel that I can find my footing in a story and that I'm having a linear narrative. And I have to say, that a story to me, if in the end it's a dream, it feels like a bit of a waste of story. And I know that is a very personal thing. So I'm saying these are all personal things. I know I'm still going to get commenters very triggered by the fact that I didn't like a book that they liked, even though I'm just talking about the fact that this is what I think about it personally. Uh, then the next one on the list is The Children of the New Forest. This is one that I did a soft DNF a couple years ago, and I haven't picked it back up. At some point, I will pick it up. It does sound interesting. It is all about these children that fend for themselves in the new forest. They're living there. And it's one that's referenced in a fair amount of literature, uh, classic literature. And I just know that a few years ago, Katie from Books and Things read it. And she felt like, I think I'm glad that I read it, but I don't love it. And I just I haven't had much more motivation to, <laughs> to pick it back up. So at some point, I will try again with The Children of the New Forest. I own a copy. It's in a box somewhere. I don't know where it is. Um, it will happen at some point. Um, then The Water Babies by Charles Kingsley. This, I think, is kind of a bread and butter book for many um, British children. I, I know a fair number of booktubers that they it was just a mainstay when you were a kid that you read The Water Babies. So it does sound really imaginative and different and... Um, 
I worry, though, that it might end up in the Alice in Wonderland category. So I have avoided it because if I haven't read it, then I don't know that I don't like it, right? Kind of outrageous that I do that. But that is <laughs> some, that is a thing that I do. Um, so yes, those that's my um, kind of selection of Victorian children's literature. Please let me know if you think there are some more winners out there that I should try out um, because I am always open to trying more Victorian children's literature, especially because I like to share it with my boys. Um, and this is a way that we can share it. Uh, oh, did I forget to talk about, I did, I just realized one more, and that is The Light Princess by George MacDonald. So I read the complete fairy tales of George MacDonald last year, and every single fairy tale I did not enjoy except for The Light Princess. The Light Princess was so moving. Um, I was weeping as I was listening to it, and there, it, uh, there is sacramental imagery uh, that is done so beautifully uh, there's a whole kind of baptismal regeneration scene, and George MacDonald has really interesting um, religious imagery in his stories. Uh, so I really loved The Light Princess. It was so beautiful and so moving. It's one that I would like to read aloud to my boys. It's a story that is just packed full of meaning for young readers and old. Um, and what I love is kind of, it's a running theme in Victorian literature that I always love, and that is when someone goes through character growth, um, that is the plot. The plot is them growing and um, their, uh, their character being refined. And I love that so much. Um, so it's told really beautifully and captivatingly in The Light Princess. So that is my group of Victorian children's literature. And again, just let me know if you think there's one out there that I haven't read that would be worthwhile. Uh, thank you as always for watching and I hope you are having a lovely Victober and I will be back with another video soon. Bye!